It is well established that obesity also increases the risk of a number of different cancers. Not all different types of cancers, but certain cancer risk is increased with obesity. So before I go on and talk a little bit more about cancer and obesity, I realize that some of you guys haven't actually learned about cancer at this point in your degree unless you've taken uh, Andrew Brooke Wilson's course. Um, but uh, cancer basically is a, uh, it's when cells lose control when the genetic uh, signals that are supposed to keep cell growth regulated are changed, are impacted due to <laughs> often environmental factors, but also our genetics can predispose to these changes as well. And typically in healthy cells, you know, one cell divides into two and then keeps dividing and then there's like a stop signal at some point. But in a cell that has an accumulation of mutations, these cells keep growing and growing and growing and other factors can promote the uh, consistent growth of the, those mutated cells as well, cells with more than one mutation, several mutations. But basically these mutations promote this pro-multiplication state, <laughs> which causes these cancer cells to keep growing. And these cancer cells, they don't function like the original healthy cell function too. So one of the issues with cancer is that it takes up room from healthy tissue. Um, it like blocks things, it pushes on things. It just kind of, it takes up a lot of fuel uh, creates its own mini vasculature too to take in more fuel as well um, and which leaves others tissues starved. So that's just kind of a basic overview of cancer. <laughs> it's not really the point of this section but I realize you guys some of you guys don't know so I just wanted to give you an overview of cancer to get started off. So like we talked about in the first module of this unit, um, obesity is associated with a number of cancers, but not all. What's interesting is that we do see a risk with obesity and a lot of female-oriented cancers like endometrial cancer, uh, a slightly higher relative risk in those with uh, for breast cancer as well. We see a higher risk of um, ovarian cancer too, and these are things that, as this question asks, that can in, um, that can affect uh, fertility, particular endometrial and ovarian cancer. Uh, we also see a higher relative risk of colorectal cancer, not just in females, but males as well. We just see a bit higher of a risk typically in females, which we don't really fully understand. Uh, esophageal cancer, kidney cancer, pancreatic cancer, those risks are all elevated with obesity. But again, the exact mechanism has still yet to be unpacked. Okay, so like we said, breast, kidney, esophageal, gastrointestinal, specifically colon cancers, reproductive cancers, uh, the epidemiological evidence linking cancer and obesity, or obesity and cancer is clear. The mechanism <laughs> is not. I'm laughing because I feel like I say this every unit. And again, something that we keep saying every unit is low grade inflammation is probably one of those factors that's linking uh, obesity and cancer, okay? So this slide gives some kind of proposed linkage between uh, cancer progression and obesity and kind of crosstalk between cancer cells and uh, dysfunctional adipocytes. So cancer cells might induce lipolysis where adipocytes, adipocytes lose lipids and develop more of a fibril, fibroblast-like phenotype. This phenotype, which we now refer to as a cancer-associated adipocyte, has again, like we see in obesity, uh, this dysregulated adipokine secretion pattern. Um, and we see these pro-inflammatory uh, adipokines that are being secreted we do see potentially release of high fire fat, more fatty acids if they are being delipidated. Um, and these changes support the growth of cancer. So it's like cancer promotes some of the adipocyte dysfunction that we see in obesity, and that adipocyte dysfunction can in turn promote cancer. It's potentially one of those feedback loops that we don't want to see because it's a reinforcing feedback loop in this case, which might promote more invasiveness, the likelihood of cancer to invade other tissues and aggression, the, the rapid growth of cancer that we see that can 
be evident in um, in forms of cancer. Okay, so what we do see another some other linkages between obesity and cancer is that we do see a lot of tumor infiltration invasion into adipose tissue, and probably because the microenvironment of obesity is really permissible to the um, development of cancer. Okay, uh, it has some of these pro <laughs> pro-cancerish secretions uh, from uh, the, that dysfunctional white adipose tissue, which can again promote that cancer growth, perhaps. That's one of the hypotheses, okay? And like we said, those cancer-associated adipocytes, when cancer cells are there, they undergo lipolysis and they develop that fibroblast-like phenotype and they again change their adipocyte, adipokine secretion patterns, which may shift tumors towards this invasion and aggression, something we talked about on that last slide. Plus, adipose tissue is a great source of nutrients. <laughs> there are a lot of nutrients. There's a decent amount of blood flow to adipose tissue as well. Cancer loves that. Cancer wants to grow, and it needs nutrients in, to grow. So that, again, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a permissible environment for cancer cells to grow. So what I just talked about when it comes to obesity and cancer, these are some of the proposed mechanisms. Here is a newer review article from 2019, which proposes some other mechanisms linking obesity and uh, cancer. So like we talked about, altered adipokine production, particularly a decrease in adiponectin, which typically is associated with a lower risk of obesity when that's... Um, change when adipokine adiponectin levels go down that might increase risk uh, we've talked about those pro-inflammatory adipokines and cytokines which are increased in obesity uh, we also see a higher level of estrogen um, levels in obesity and this might be uh, some of the mechanisms linking obesity to the female cancers like um, ovarian cancer and um, and uterine cancer and breast cancer as well, okay? Uh, we also see a higher risk of cancer when individuals have insulin resistance, and we know obesity increases the risk of that. Like I mentioned, obesity creates a microenvironment, microvascular environment that's very permissible to the development of cancer. Um, the high fat diet can promote uh, some, some stress <laughs> on uh, cells that perhaps might promote their alteration too. There might be alterations to the microbiome, which we'll discuss later on with respect to just obesity in general. But again, it's probably not one thing. It's probably a combination of factors that are linking obesity and cancer. Um, and something worth mentioning as well is not only does obesity typically increase the risk of cancer and cancer-related morbidity, um, it also increases the risk that once someone has cancer, it's it's going to not end well. Um, and part of the reason why is that um, obesity can really compromise intervention strategies. So, for instance, if we're if someone's undergoing chemotherapy, um, um, obesity can compromise drug delivery to the body and to specific target tissues. So that can affect treatment when it comes to obesity. Okay. So again, there isn't one specific mechanism linking obesity and this uh, chronic disease. And again, it's, it's a question of do we need to know the exact mechanism to do something about it too. So again, you know, it's good to know this, especially if we're looking for pharma pharmacological interventions. Uh, but if we're looking more at uh, lifestyle interventions, this information is perhaps the, the mechanism is less important. And we, you know, might just say that it's hard to fully know. So let's concentrate on what we can actually do to help our clients or people with obesity.